Hello dear friends, welcome to Radio Frequency Classes. Today I will explain a very important topic which is called as a Smith chart. It is very very useful while designing any impedance matching circuit. If we know about the impedance value, okay, for given any load, you want to find out the input impedance, you want to find out the V max, V minimum, how to plot the load impedance itself on a Smith chart, how to plot the YL corresponding admittance, load admittance. Then how to find out the particular reflection coefficient, what actually Smith chart is, how to plot all those values. So it is going to be really helpful for you if you are going to learn the transmission line or in future any kind of matching circuit you want to solve. This video is very very useful for you. Now moving further, I will discuss about the Smith chart now. I will start. So as you can see, if I will talk about the impedance chart on this Smith chart, then any possible impedance value which is given as Z square to R plus minus Jx can be plotted on this Smith chart. So Z is having two part R okay, plus minus Jx. So one real part and one reactive part. So the real part circles are this, just I wanted to show you. So you this. So these all are the real value circles. If z is equal to r plus minus jx, the real value and imaginary value. So all these circles, what you are seeing here, okay, it is just a incomplete Smith chart, not a full Smith chart. Now just I want to give you a visualization how real part looks like. So easily you can find out any value on this Smith chart. So the first circle, outer circle is having zero. Okay, it represents r is equal to zero. This represents R squared to 0.1 like that it goes. At the center, R is squared to 1. And at this left hand side, if you'll see, okay, this is infinity. So R is squared to infinity is this point. R is squared to 1 is this point, And R is squared to 0 is this point. So any value, if you'll say, purely reactive value will lie on outer circle. Okay, on this outer circle. I hope it is clear what is the real value circle or real part of this impedance. Now talking about the reactive value. Okay, so all these circles are the reactive value circle. So it is divided into two part. First one is the plus Jx, another one is minus Jx. So if you see the center line, the center line, above part is having plus Jx circle. So this also starts from zero and then exactly at 90 degree it is plus 1j upper side and exactly at this minus 90 degree it is minus 1j. So if any circle which starts from here and passes from this point, this will give you minus 1j value. Okay. And real part is 0 as I told at the outer circuit. Okay. So this also starts from 0 and goes to the infinity. And this side starts from 0 and goes to the infinity. So two reactive value, you can see here upper half and lower half. Upper half will be having plus jx and lower half will be having minus jx. Now combining these two, this is the complete Smith chart without the parametric values. Here I have not denoted the values. Just I wanted to show you if I'll combine these real circles and the imaginary circles, this kind of Smith chart we will have and we can plot any possible value of Z impedance. Okay. And we can correspondingly find out the reflection coefficient, VHWR or other parameters. Now moving here, I'll discuss more about the short circuit point and open circuit point for particular impedance chart. Okay, so as I have explained, this point is zero and this side is infinity. So when we have a circuit and that circuit is open here, it means we have infinity impedance. Okay, and V is maximum and I is minimum. And if it is circuit is short, then same impedance will be zero. V will be minimum and I will be maximum. So I hope it's clear. So this point zero will be treated as a short circuit. Okay. And when it is short circuit, it means V is minimum here. And this is infinity. It is open circuit. So V will be maximum here. So this point is clear. I hope so. Now talking about the center point of the Smith chart. So always whenever you will get a load value, whether it is here at this point or this point, anywhere you get the load impedance value, our aim is to reach this center point. Why? Because on this Smith chart, this center point is called as the matched point. Okay. So always we will reach to the match point. Now how to define this match point is reflection coefficient gamma is 0 here. VHWR is 1 here. Okay. Real part is 1 and imaginary part plus minus Jx is 0. 
so you have to remember these four points at the center point of this me chart gamma reflection coefficient is 0 vhwr is 1 real part r is 1 imaginary part plus minus jx is 0 why it is so now we'll discuss the normalization point why because this smith chart is nothing but a normalized smith chart so whenever we have a load value whether it is like see 100 plus 100 j or 100 minus 100 j whatever that value is always we have to normalize it with respect to the characteristic impedance why it is so because suppose i'll take a transmission line whatever kind of transmission line you will take whether it's a plane transmission line cpw micro strip or any other kind of transmission lines where you would like to do the matching it has certain kind of characteristic impedance in most of the cases that characteristic impedance defined as a 50 ohm so whatever load value you will be getting it which you would like to match with this transmission line first point is you have to normalize it with respect to the characteristic impedance if it is 50 ohm divide zl with 50 if it is 75 ohm divide with 75 if it is 100 ohm divide with the 100 ohm and then find out the normalized load value okay so that will be given as a z divided by z naught so this is your capital zl r plus minus jx divided with z naught you will get the normalized value so here if i'll divide this with 50 i'll get 2 plus 2j in uh, if it is uh, 100 uh, minus 100j then we'll get 2 minus 2j now i'll show you certain things so it will be much easier for you this is the called as a unity circle okay so on unity circle when we have a real value as a matched value then that load value will be plotted on this circle so suppose i take it as a 1 plus 1j then you can see here we read on this chart the value is 1 so this circle belongs to 1 okay and here we will read the reactive values which is 1.0 so the intersection of these two points will give the will give us the normalized load value so as you can see what example i have taken is 2 plus 2j so i have to find out at the center line where is 2 i see here it is 2 so this is the circle of real value now we have to find out the reactive value which is plus 2j when it is plus means that value will lie at upper half of the switch chart not the lower if it is minus then that value will lie at the lower part of the switch chart now we have to read the reactive value so we have to read at this outer point so here you can see this is 2 so now this circle okay so intersection of this will give us 2 plus 2j so this is our normalized general so this way you can plot any value on the smith chart i hope now once you watch this you will able to easily plot any possible load value so first we have to find out the load value then we have to find out the normalized value divide with characteristic impedance then we have to read the real value of the circle and then imaginary value of the circle and intersect point will be giving us the load point on the smith chart now corresponding to this if we want to find out the reflection coefficient so how we can find it out so whatever point you will get it just take from the center to this straight line extend like this so if you will measure it here we cannot measure okay but if you have the hard copy of the smith chart if you will measure approximately if i am correct it will be around seven point 7 centimeter from here to here this one so same way this point will be also from here to here it will be 7.7 .7. and then you measure this one from center to this point suppose this is as a l1 and this complete is nothing but l2 then l1 divided by l2 will give you the reflection coefficient but this is little bit tedious method so easy one is whatever load point we will calculate okay we will draw the circle taking this as a radius draw the circle so to explain it in little better way i will move further and i will give you an example okay now i have taken a load value z l is equal to 60 plus 80 j ohm so what i will do is characteristic impedance z naught is 50 ohm and load impedance is 60 plus 80 j so ZL normalized value will be ZL by Z0. So that value is 1.2 plus 1.6. So we have to find out the 1.2 on the Smith chart. So it is 1, this is 1.4, this is 1.2. So this circle belongs to 1.2 and this is plus 1.6. So this is my 
load point normalized load point jdl 1.2 plus 1.6 j so what i will do from here center of this switch chart to this point i'll take a line and then i'll draw a circle which will be nothing but a vhwr circle this way so this will be your vhwr circle the point is nothing but this one this is your load point one second yes this is my load point and this is the center point so i have taken this as a radius and then i have drawn the circle so here you have to read the value on the center line that value is nothing but 4 this is nothing but a vhwr okay so for defined jdl if question is asked find out the vhwr then what we have to do just we have to plot the load impedance then take the radius from center line to this point draw the circle this is constant vhwr circle what it is called constant constant vhwr circle circle so when i'll move on this circle okay means suppose this is a transmission line and this is my load what i'm talking about 1.2 plus 1.6 j so when i'll move across this load towards the generator my vhwr remains same on this line okay so then it will be easy if vhwr is changing then matching is not correct Okay, VHWR should be same. So you have to move on same transmission line to find out the other parameters. Now see, so we uh, we moved from here to here and we read this value. This value is nothing but VHWR. And we know the formula 1 plus mod of gamma divided by 1 minus mod of gamma will give you the HWR. Okay, so from here you can calculate the, if you know the HWR, you can calculate the gamma also. It is very easy. And another method I will tell you, which is also uh, easy method, gamma is equal to nothing but ZL minus Z0 by ZL plus Z0. But here ZL is complex, so it is a little difficult. So what we'll do is we'll just read out this point, okay, 4. But it is a normalized value of the real part. So we have to denormalize it. So when we'll denormalize, we'll get the ZL as a 4 into 50, means 200. So now we can use this formula, gamma is equal to 200 minus 50 divided by 200 plus 50 and we can find out the reflection coefficient. This is also easy method to find out the reflection coefficient. Now second part, this is only magnitude. For gamma, you are having the magnitude and angle also. Okay, so this was the magnitude. Now talking about the angle, what you have to do is this center line, whatever you are taking from here to here, just you have to extend like this. And then this is zero degree then here you can read as a 10 degree here you can read 20 30 40 50 so likewise just you have to draw a proper straight line okay little bit tilted i am drawing it so just see this one so to explain little bit in easy way i'll move further see here for the same point as i told so this the center line this is my load point and this is the intersecting point so you can see this is 40 and this is 50 around 46 degree Okay, so we can calculate the reflection coefficient by three methods as I explained you. First one, you can find out the this one length which I told you as 7.7 .7 centimeter it comes and this also you can find out from here whatever comes you write it here this will give you the gamma okay magnitude and angle you will be getting from here to this point which is close to 40. 6 degree okay so these are the methods to find out the reflection coefficient now in next video i'll explain you how to find out the v maxima and v minima for the given load impedance and for a given condition thank you if you like the content kindly share and subscribe this channel radio frequency classes thank you for watching my lecture